is 840 News Talk Saga 960 Raw. Mike Richards, as we uh, literally travel the globe, we have gone from Montreal and whiskey tasting to L.A., where, you know, there could be whiskey tasting right now, as far as I know. Uh, this this remains to be seen. Right? 540, but what is there? No, was there a bad time to have whiskey? I, I think not. Uh, and what we're talking about today is a, a very cool documentary. And you know what, on this show, as you know, we, we love the docs, right? Because it's uh, basically the strength for people to show either the good or the bad or the both. And this morning we talked to Roy Tai, who's, are you originally from Fort Francis, uh, Ontario? Is that uh, what I'm seeing correctly? Yeah, that's correct, yep. So you're taking that old common, the old Fort Francis to LA routine. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> Another guy? Come on! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Getting, yeah. Sick, getting sick of that. And Richard Lett, who is the subject of the documentary, and Richard uh, joins us now from Vancouver. So also uh, an, uh, a stand-up who loves getting up before six o'clock in the, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> My favorite time. Yeah, I bet it is. I bet it is. Richard, you know what? Thanks so much for joining us. I've had a chance to see a portion of it. And the one thing about, uh, you know, these kinds of documentaries, uh, and we, we've had a lot of the the, uh, the wrestling ones on, you know, the dark side of the ring where, you know, you, it, it, I, I can't imagine it's the easiest thing in the world uh, to, to sit there and, and show what maybe a lot of people would want to hide or not admit to. So at some point, Richard, you know, as a stand-up, I mean, Look, stand-up is, is raw and as honest, as, I think, as a profession, as profession gets. I mean, that's why we love it so much. I mean, you got to have a lot of strength to do this. But even more so, Richard, when you're saying publicly that you felt that you sabotaged what was going to be or is going to be a great career. So how do you come to that point? Well, um, not willingly. The yeah, um, reality is that uh, alcoholism and, and drug addiction uh, is a fairly subtle um, sort of uh, disease to acquire. It's also the only disease that tells you you don't have. Um, and oddly, in the world of uh, stand-up, uh, there's a certain uh, it's romanticized, really, that... Uh, to be that you know hard drinking uh, sort of badass guy, and um, so it took a long time for me to realize that what was I thought my persona and my shtick was in fact uh, um, taking away the opportunities and um, and in no sh uh, small amount my life, uh, and that was that was hard to to face as far as it being filmed and um, turned into a documentary, I, I'm grateful for the efforts and what Roy has done with it, but that doesn't make it easy to watch, um, especially when I was sort of unaware of how bad it got. You know, those last days were pretty blurry, um, but uh, fortunately, Roy was there to capture every moment. So <laughs> I, get to, I get to see it in living color. So, so yeah. Richard, um, just so people get perspective and sort of context in, in, in your career, when you, when you start and, and generally sort of the, the crowd you're with, your contemporaries, what, what comics are we talking about in, the, in, in this country in particular? Who, who, who are the guys that you're hanging with and performing with in general? Like Probably. Mike McDonald would be in that group. Uh, like, who, who, who's your yeah, contemporary? Um, yeah, um, you know, Mike McDonald uh, was probably the most famous or the most established of the Canadian comedians. Uh, you know, Glenn Foster. These are all guys that are, um, you know, Ron Vaudry. These are guys that have been in it for a long, long time and around the same age. Man, just turned sixty. I, you know, worked in the States, um, spent a little time with um, Dave Chappelle and, um, and Chris Rock and Robin Williams. Uh, I became friends with the Zach Galifianakis. And uh, so um, those are sort of the names. The, my, my crew, um, who were all younger, if you're an alcoholic, you really need to get younger and younger men to hang out with because 
um, the ones your age have either grown up and moved on or died. <laughs> and right, so right, right. So you need uh, um, a younger crew, Brett Martin and Matt Billen and Peter Anthony were sort of my my crew um, in the, when I was in my 40s, they're all in their uh, 20s. And I, I remember saying to one of them, hey, I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good keeping up with you young fellows. He said, keeping up? <laughs> You're our leader. So, <laughs> uh, uh, the name of the documentary, by the way, is Never Be Done. You can check them out on social media, Never Be Done Film. Uh, tomorrow it releases on Amazon, YouTube, Google Play. You can order it today to get a sneak peek at it ahead of time. Uh, Roy, let, let's, let's go back to forming the relationship with Richard. Where do you guys actually meet? And how do you, uh, I guess, uh, decide that I like the idea of doing this. Uh, and did you ever picture it being as long uh, of, a, of a filming about Richard as it actually was? Because I believe it was over the course of seven years. Yeah, that's correct. Um, the, uh, where me and Richard met, I guess the, de the decision where I decided that I was going to keep filming it is the very first time we decided to go film one of Richard's sets at Yuck Yucks, we got kicked out. So I was like, okay, uh, this sounds like something interesting that I could maybe possibly sink my teeth into. <laughs> um, now you're kicked out. Um, why? Why? Why are you getting kicked out of Yucks? What happened? Richard had some problem with the manager um, and called him. Uh, he had a pink shirt, and uh, he, the guy had a problem with uh, me showing up with a video camera to film Richard's set, and uh, I didn't clear it with him. And then Richard you know, gave him his two cents and I just saw them. I'm sitting in the corner, like all nervous. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, I'm I think I'm going to ruin Rich. Like I'm getting Richard in trouble. Right. At first I was doing it because I just thought it would be fun to hang out and just capture some cool footage of this notorious comedian. And it, 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 you can even see in the beginning of the doc, you, you see us hanging out with Richard, drinking with him and just having fun. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't like this, Hey, we're, we're going to make this documentary on this guy and he's going to become an alcoholic and ruin his life. You know what I mean? We're hanging out with him and just having fun. So I'm just sitting in the corner and the manager comes up to me and is like yelling at me. And I'm like, oh, okay, I don't know. Like I was just told to come down here and film Richard said, and he's like, why who? And then Richard came over and then I just see them off in the corner arguing <laughs> and Richard's hands going up and then his, him going, Ugh! and then like pointing to the door. And I'm like, what's going on? So I'm <laughs> nervous that like I've gotten Richard in trouble. And then Richard's like, all right, let's go Roy. And then we go outside and, and he, and then he says to me, yeah, like, we got we got the boot, and uh, and then I just said, well, let's let's just shoot something. And he was like, okay. And then I did, and I go, you got anything? And he goes, I could do some poetry slam for you. And so we just did some poetry slam right there on the street, and that's how the documentary opens up. Wow. I'm kidding. Richard. Not your first uh, banning of a club. Not your first. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I um I thought it, I probably was trying to be funny. Um, I do remember um, him having a pink shirt and me asking some of the staff if they all had to wear pink shirts. And then um, I suspect I uh, um, suggested um, that, you know, that he, his uh, preference for sexual partners was of the same gender yeah. as him and maybe use a pejorative that... Um, <laughs> that suggested that as well um i'm um it comes up in the film a few times i remember um uh, saying my friend brett you know i say that this you know the other f bomb like um 20 times and so he says oh so they cut most of them out <laughs> so yeah oh well anyway well, 
and so when you when you look at, look and then some guys you know there's there's tours where guys work blue generally i mean it's just uh, you know and it's, it's 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 hard to find actually it's hard it's hard for for blue comics actually at times to even find a place and people uh, you know sorry but comedy clubs to me are almost the last bastion of free speech if you're going to a comedy club you're going to could be it's it's it should be because you appreciate the fact that these guys are going to be as raw and honest as possible you know it's it's uh, it, it, to me it, this is what I'm, I'm always afraid of in this world of of where it's going at times is not allowing people the freedom to do that kind of material because i think it is important i think it is a i think it is an issue of freedom in in this respect richard do you think uh after this comes out does the career continue on? Do you change it all? Or do you think, like, what is the end result of this doc coming out for you? What, what will that be? Or what do you hope it will be? Well, I, I mean, the documentary um, follows me changing. So the, the fact that, um, that I have changed is pr probably the sort of the plot line, I guess, of, of, the, of the doc. And so that changes some uh, process that I'm, I'm constantly involved with. Uh, not to, you know, be too grim about it, but um, alcoholism and, and drug addiction are, are uh, deadly, uh, you know, problems in our, in our world. And um, so the challenge of, of not, you know, succumbing to that addiction uh, requires, uh, uh, you know, a change in the, in the way that you do things and, and more importantly, why you do things. And so the reason that I do stand up now, the gigs that I've been doing most frequently are in support of, of recovery um, conventions and, and treatment centers and fundraisers for various projects, camp outs and things like that for people that are um, in recovery or trying to get into recovery. So, you know, um, it's not, there, there is no payday uh, um, associated except for the fact that, that I get to live. Um, and, and, you know, like arguably that's a pretty big payday uh, yeah. considering the, you know, Mike, it's, it's hard for people to wrap their head around this because alcohol is such a uh, um, social, you know, like not a, a problem as far as drug addictions go. But, you know, in, in Vancouver, for example, last year, they announced that 1,400 people had died from opiate overdoses, you know, fentanyl and, and all that. Everyone went, oh, wow, 1,400 people. And um, most of them are men and and that's you know another issue but um what's going on with these guys but the reality is is that the reason they don't have similar statistics for alcohol is that they can't count it They're, the the number is so high and so multi-layered like the mob has got nothing on alcohol as far as how to kill people and so the loss of life is at, you know epidemic and and so you know it's a it's a real thing and for me um the opportunity to to be funny about that and to engage people and to you know get people to show up and and pay money to see a show in support of it is um is what's changed i i no longer um uh do this because um you know, to draw attention to myself, but more to draw attention to the fact that recovery is possible. So, Guys, I, I know we're up against it time-wise, but quickly, uh, Roy, can you tell us where we could find this, uh, how people can find this? Uh, are you guys taking this as far as any sort of screenings once uh, our whole COVID-19 situation here in Canada and in the United States is lifted. Uh, just a little bit more information about this because this is definitely something that people would want to see in their homes and they can do it as of today. Yeah, so where to find it, you can get it today on iTunes. So you can just go on your Apple TV or iTunes on your phone or whatever you want to do and you can download it and uh, purchase it or rent it today. Um, Amazon uh, on tomorrow and the various other platforms um, that are out there. You can always just go to neverbedone.com 
and there's you'll get the information there. Richard's Facebook, um, you know, Thailand Productions, my production company, my name. You're going to be able to find it very easily through those outlets of where to where to purchase it. Um, in regard to public screenings, we can't. We already did the the festival run, so um, we're not doing a theatrical release. Um, if that does change, that would be on one of our social media um, platforms on you know my Thailand Instagram or Never Be Done Instagram, that kind of thing. You'll 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 hear about it that way. So if you're following that stuff. You, you'll get an update pretty quickly on where you can watch it live, but definitely you could stream it today. So just head yeah, just, on over to iTunes. Just curious before we go, how, how was it received at the festivals? What was the reaction to the, to, to the film? Uh, standing ovation. And then a lot of people coming up and uh, crying because they've dealt with a, uh, a family member or themselves have struggled with alcoholism. And then they want to like gravitate towards Richard and, and talk to him about it. That's that's just fantastic. Hey, Richard, thanks so much uh, uh, for not only sharing your story, but uh, you know, ha having the guts and the balls to 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 say this is this is what happens. This is this is the potential. And you know what? I don't think you can do that enough because it's as you said, it's romanticized when you're in that business. When you're the young guy in there, you're probably looking to be a part of a part of a group doing whatever they want to do because you wanna you wanna fit in. It'd be very easy, very easy in that life to slide into it. But as you said, what you slide into is potentially life ending. And so to share that, it's, uh, it's very brave. I think it's very cool. And I got to tell you, Richard, uh, I wish you all the luck in the world. And hopefully we get a chance to talk to you again sometime. Thanks to you, Mike, for having me on. Yeah, Richard, thanks guys for having us on. And Roy Tai, thanks very much uh, for this morning. Once again, uh, joining us here, talking about that documentary that uh, I will be watching immediately. <laughs> I got to tell you, as soon as the show's <laughs> over, that's Absolutely. what I'm doing. That was fantastic. Uh, great stuff.